All right, guys, so I'm just gonna give you a quick introduction to probability generating functions, all right? Now, one of the things that I just wanna get across in this video, I'm not going through why we do it, I'm not going through the purpose, I'm not going through any of the snazzy things that we can do with it. All I wanna do is explain to you what a probability generating function is and basically how, how we do it, okay? Um, hopefully you'll get the idea of why we do it and what the purpose is as you get a little bit deeper into it. But that's, uh, you know, I don't want to do too much at one time. So here we go, probability generating functions. So first, here is the definition of a probability generating function. Okay, the probability generating function gt for x is gt equals the expected value of t to the x power. Okay, now we know that expected value is the probability of a specific value times that value to a specific power, okay? So this is, uh, so that's t to the k, t to the x, right? So that is the expected value of t to the x. Now what is t? Well, t is all values of t for which g of t is finite. Now, for now, <laughs> don't worry too much about that. We just wanna get used to this idea of all the probability generating function is is this thing where we've got the expected value of t to, t to the x power, all right? So I'm gonna show you one example right now, okay? Again, don't worry too much about why, what, any of those other things, all right? But I'm gonna show you one example right now, and then in some of my following videos, you'll see some other examples, and eventually we'll get to the purpose behind all of this PGF stuff, all right? So here we go. Um, this question, let x be a discrete random variable which takes values one, two, three, and six, each with a probability of one over four. So, you know, you've done discrete uh, random variables before. Um, each one has the same probability, so it's a uniform probability. If I were to set up, you know, a, a probability table, right, I'd have my value and then I'd have the probability of that and so the possible values are one, two, three, and six. And then it does say that the probability for each one is one quarter, okay? So, I mean, we've worked with things like this before, right? It's just four possible values, each one having an equal probability, all right? Now, the question is asking us to find the PGF for X, all right? So we're going to set that up, all right? Now, remember, the PGF, from the previous slide is such that g of t is equal to the expected value of t to the x power, all right? So let's go ahead and set that up. The expected value of x, so it's gonna be the probability of a specific value times t to that x value, all right? So if we're doing that for this situation right here, Okay, actually, sorry, that should be the, the summation to get the expected value. So we're gonna take the probability of the first one, so that's one-fourth, so it's gonna be one-fourth, times t to the x power. So t to the x power, x is one. And then it's gonna be the summation, so I'm gonna add in the next one. So the next one is gonna have a probability of one-fourth, and then it'll be t to the x power again. This time x is two. And then we're gonna add on the next one. So the next probability is one fourth again, times t to the x power. This time x is three. And then the last one, again, one fourth. And t this time x is six, all right? And that's simply how it is. You could pull it out and we'd simplify it to look something like this. The PGF, which is gt is equal to one fourth times t plus t squared plus t cubed plus t to the sixth power. And that's the PGF, that answers the question. Now what do we do with this? Why do we care? Well, that'll come in some of my next couple of videos. Let's get used to the idea of the PGF first and how to find it, and then we'll talk about why we do it and what we can do with it. All right, that's it for now.